Hello and welcome to the Endless Honeymoon Podcast. It's me, Moshe Kasher. And Natasha. And we've got a very special guest, a dear friend, as we were just talking about before we started rolling. Yeah. We've known each other. We all have known each other basically our entire career. It's Eliza Schlesinger, ladies Hi. and gentlemen. But folks. we never hang out. But we never hang out, but now we've changed that through the power of podcasting. I bought your book before oh. I was your friend, Kasher on the Rye, which I still to this day think is the cutest name. And you and I did that gig in like mm, Connecticut. Do you remember this? We did like... Yes. This is, you remember it. She cites it constantly. Okay. You're the reason we're together today. This no, no, is no. Not a She's joke. talking about something else. She's saying that we did a gig in Connecticut together. Yeah. And I remember, I remember what I was wearing because you were like <laughs> telling me. I think you told me to not. I, I don't know. Go backless. I don't remember, but I remember you gave me like a, a wardrobe tip. But the thing. The, <laughs> But and the this thing is why I, we don't hang no, out. No, no, no. <laughs> the thing I really remember, uh -oh. no, Eliza is very integral to me dating you because you told me on the steps, I remember where we were, we were at El Cid and you were like, yeah, I just read Moshe's book. It was really good. It was like, yeah. And you kept telling me how good his book was. And I was like, oh, I guess I should check it out. I guess I should marry him. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I got the, a baby. That's you you were it. like, you were telling me like you were impressed by his book. And I was like, oh, really? And then I got the book and then I, I decided to, <laughs> way, this to have favorite, a child with him. This is my favorite kind of story because it starts with somebody. But it somebody. was Eliza. I thought, <laughs> I read the book on my own. I read a book. And now Eliza, we're in a house. And you're married with a kid. I mean, we yeah. could have had a totally different destiny. It could have been different. I, been. I don't think, I honestly don't think I would have come up with, because Eliza was like, yeah, he's really cool. And he's like, cute and cool. You should, like, you were like really, you must have been like deep into the book or something. I, that's what I'm saying. I think there was like certain comics that like, you were like, that's a cool comic. Like, how do I be friends with this comic and not have, like, I just, and it's hard to do with like boys and girls, like. There's another male comic where I'm like, I just want to be your friend. They're like, did you want to do more? You're like, no, I li it's just, I actually just appreciate your jokes. I, I, I find it didn't work. It's hard. <laughs> Turns out he assaulted a lot of people. Oh yeah. Well, that's also really common. You know, you try to get to know a male comic and then invariably you go, oh, you're okay. You've been, oh, doing, a, of shit? You've okay. been doing a lot of assaulting. Okay. Great. I'm out. Eliza gave the first crumb to me becoming you your wife. Honey. You came for the crumbs. Yeah. And I also remember forever you and I had, shows or like show on god i don't it was a pi we both had pilots i i can't oh that's right was it freeform or was it e it was e <laughs> you wait <laughs> well, our shows came out at the same time yes that's and right I, I just remember you said something and i like, saw you on the lot and you said something and you were like i'm gonna help natasha with her show and i don't know if you were dating it but i remember thinking like who goes out of their way to like help another comic who like also has dreams and it's like oh he liked her Oh Wait, yeah! You were helping me with the show, doing what? what? I don't know what I was helping doing. Me I how? remember you said it clear as day. It was maybe like another period producing or right. Oh, maybe you were on a, he, it was he was a, a writer on another period. Yeah, it wasn't really altruistic. I got paid WGA, so <laughs> there, there's another one. Union. Yeah, no, I don't know. Maybe so. That that's possible. But yes, Eliza, it is funny that you've played such an integral part in our relationship and our life. Crumb sprinkler. Yeah, you're, you're the crumb sprinkler of comedy. That's what everybody calls People you. People think that's my last name. Crumb Wait, <laughs> I have a question for you, Eliza, because you are a very accomplished comedian. You have how many Netflix specials? Uh, two, I would say too many. Seven. Oh, two, it doesn't, it's is six. it seven? It's six. I have it's half of one, so six. I'm very impressed. It's nuts. Do you have one of those half hour specials? No, I no, have. we did a special we did together. Oh. <laughs> we did like a, actually you have three quarters of one because we I did, have specials we did, at other places that people don't watch, but in terms yeah, of Netflix. Eliza, right. how, how? No, but I'm not done with my oh, question. Oh, I'm so sorry. So my, my question is as a woman yeah. and a comedian. Eliza, how, how? No, like, I'll handle this as a woman. <laughs> no, like, oh, so you're a very accomplished comedian and then you just had a baby. She's two? She's 15 months. Oh, okay. She's 15 months. She's angel baby. And like, do you find, because I wrote about this a lot in my book, like, do you find that your pre-motherhood, Eliza, like, is that something that you are still in very, like, in connection with? Or do you feel like a new you is morphing? Because, you know, having this, like, full-blown career where you're doing all this stuff and then you also have this, like, thing where it's, like, baby in the morning, I'm dealing with this, this is my life now. Like, I, I don't know, do you, st I, I struggle with it a lot, so I'm wondering. Sure, I mean, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that like I have full-time help. 
Yeah. I do too, but I'm, I'm I sure. mean, but still it's like just two gals in LA <laughs> talking about child rearing. Well, I guess you have to say that because there's the moms that connect on like, I'm so exhausted. Like you can still be exhausted when you have a nanny nine to five or you have a live whatever. Um, I mean, so. my kid still, she goes to school at nine or nine 30, but she still wakes me up at six 30 in the morning. Oh. I mean, my, my kid's five though. So it's a right. little different. So it's like, I'm not going to have a nanny sneak into my house at five 45 no. and wait for her to wake up no. and then feed her breakfast. And then I don't see her until you come out, you dab her lips from the egg and say goodbye. <laughs> don't eat precious. too much. <laughs> uh, uh, my daughter likes to, she wakes up and she kind of like makes noise in her crib. Like I'm just playing, but my dog, hears her and then always growls to let me know she's awake and I'm like I don't like the kid is playing quietly oh you're getting ganged up on I, oh, I, and you can't sleep past a certain time but to answer your question it's uh is there anything you miss from your old personality or do you feel like you're integrating it okay this is a trash answer but like the ability to consume alcohol like uh, some would say I made a whole career off of like party goblins and talking about your journeys. And I had like two large glasses of wine at dinner on Monday. And like, I still feel bad about it today. It just changes like your physiologically, you're physio saying biologically, physiologically, metabolism wise. Like it's just different. It doesn't feel the same. I don't even know if it feels good. And it's kind of any man's guess. Any man, that's not a term how you're going to feel when you have a drink. And so that's kind of gone. And the need to be out, we were out the other night, we took a friend out, I look at my watch and it's like midnight and my husband was home with her, but I was like, what the fuck am I doing? Let's go home. And I never go, like the need to be out. I'm like, I just wanna know I'm in the house even though she's sleeping. Yeah. I just need to be near her and touch her body. And that that keeping the party going, that's gone forever. You know, like that last drink, you, <laughs> you're like, should I have this? Should I smoke this last joint? Should I, you know, it's like whatever's going to keep the party. You're never yes. keeping there, the party there's no going. There's no more party. There <laughs> is something out of my good house. to look forward to though, which is your kids will, your kids, uh, your kid, Natasha, and your kid will eventually become teenagers. Yes. And then you'll have to drink to escape that brutal reality. Do that Jews do that? Do Jews drink to escape? I don't know Jews that culturally. Don't drink that much. Yeah. Well, Jews, Jews do not have a uh, rampant history of biological alcoholism. Right. But yeah, I think, sure, yeah, you can make it happen. I, I believe I'm the, in I'm you. I'm the Jew for the you're job. A Jew, you're, you're a Jew? I'm fully. Yeah, oh, she's okay. a full on Jew. Yeah, I've been vetted. But I, there's, yeah, there's that. And I don't know if you feel this, but there's like a, a softness. Like, I don't cringe when i see other children now it's it's a weird phenomenon isn't <laughs> it, is it? Weird. i don't like, like on a them. plane like you would used to like yell at them or something just in public like if some mother was doing something i'd be like oh you're both all. and now i'm just like i get it and i don't find her gross it's, symp it's empathy. sympathy yeah it's empathy it's like it i don't find myself liking strange children you know, which is nice. Right. Uh, but I definitely have this like deep empathy for how hard it is to be out in public with a child. Like yes. I remember early on when our child was born, we flew for, with with her for the first time and I was so oh. fucking anxious and scared. And this dad came up to me and he was like, you did a good job today. And I just like, I wanted to like hold his, he had a big forearms too. So I wanted to hold his like thick forearm and just like- Red and blue coming together. <laughs> that's exactly right. But that's also being a dad in transit. Right. Versus any mother. Right, I'm. You're saying they they're gonna give you sympathy because they're like you shouldn't be even involved in and this child's life. To her, they're like that kid should have been quieter. Yeah. <laughs> that's fair. Yeah, and they're like that. And then to you, they're like you showed up and that's enough. Yeah, but so, yeah. Eliza, not only do you have a great stand up career, you're also trying to help, or you are are helping younger comedians. The, the homeless community in Los Angeles, <laughs> aka the comedians. homeless comedian community. <laughs> so wait, tell us what you're doing. They both don't have healthcare. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> they're both not doing well. Um, I just. We, did, we shot this uh, a little while ago and I just, I have um, people who open for me and I see everything that they get or don't get. And, it, and as you know, it's just a really difficult industry and everybody knows that, you guys know it. And I see people that I love and I see them, you know, up and coming and nobody did anything for me. Everything is hard fought, hard won. And I was like, there's gotta be something between putting up your own clips on YouTube uh, and, you're on, and on Instagram and a Netflix special. Sure. And so I was just like, what if I could create this space? So these comics who I like, it's not our specials. These are 10 minute specials. 10 minutes. I want to, can I, can I get one? For sure. <laughs> but I have some wardrobe notes. <laughs> but I just was like, not, you know, these are up and coming comics and they're out there. I'm out there a lot. So I created these. There's three episodes. We did 18 comics, 10 minutes each. We shot it. Kiss, kiss, bang, bang in, Koreatown. They're beautifully shot and it's a polished 10 minutes. 
And at the very least, you know, maybe they get their jokes on Sirius XM, but they have a beautiful piece of tape to share. And I just wanted to create that because it's so hard. And because you don't get things for bullshit reasons and you're out there and you're grinding and you're grinding and you're just like, can I catch a break? So this is the tiniest break. What's what it, it called and when do we? When can we see it? It's, I always forget to say the name of it, which is such a bad PR move. It's called Eliza's Locals and it's out April 28th. You got to say that. Eliza, you got to you gotta do that read on Eliza's Locals. We'll do again. It's called Eliza's Locals. There we go. You can was, get it. I was so confident. YouTube, April 28th. Um, I have a question. What right. happens to people who you meet who are like have been doing stand-up for like three weeks and they're like, do you want to watch my YouTube set? I just was at the Ice House. Like, don't you think there's a certain amount of time that people should work on their set? Do you, has someone said that to you? Yes. Really? I mean, people, oh, I get that maybe not get just that? three weeks, but like people are afraid time? of me. Oh, it could be. But when's the last time you looked in your deep DMs? <laughs> We're bored. I yeah. don't. I erase chunks at a time. Yeah, see, that's what it is. You know, they're in there. I, what but, do you but, say? I say. I think I people ignore- should work. I mean, I. I definitely was like for five years before I asked anyone to look at my set. I'll tell you, I watch every single, every single one of them. Yeah. No. Because I'm always curious, and it's always exactly what you would expect. I've never had someone say, "I just started stand up last year. I'm really checked this out and been like, oh my god, yeah. Kinnison's alive again.' Never. <laughs> it's never. It's he always- is risen. <laughs> uh, I will watch. I have something I've discovered the last couple of years is like, and I don't, I feel like you, this might resonate with you. Like, I don't even care if I make money off of it. Sometimes I just want to fix someone's joke. Cause I don't want another bad joke out there. Uh. <laughs> so it used to be like, I don't watch any comedy cause a, you don't want to steal it and B I'm too busy and I don't care. But now if I have a rapport with a comic, maybe I see them at the store a lot and we strike up a conversation. If they ask, and please don't watch this and be like, great, I can send it. If we have a relationship, I will watch and I will give you notes because nobody oh ever will. You're going to get so many videos. I, I'm not, this this will be via text. Like we have to know each okay. other. No, it's funny. You, I was just talking to Neil Brennan about this because there was a, we were watching a comedian that does not accept tags. I want to, you know. Is like, it Neil Brennan? Is that the comedian? Uh, no, I don't I know. I can imagine Neil, Neil wanting a tag. Neil, Neil, I offered him a tag once and he just went, uh. And I was like, hey, we listen, are friends. Hey, listen, it could it, Liza could have been the tag. It could have been the tag. That's all I'm saying. But we, yeah, there's, we, in my mind, there's no way it was my tag. <laughs> <laughs> like it was all. <laughs> okay, it came from me. It was absolute gold. Okay, let's start there. But we we were saying like it's. I get I get the I get the attitude of like I want everything that I say to have come out of my brain. I can understand that mm-hmm. artistically. I'm like. We were laughing because I'm like, back up. I want a, an open micer offering me the best tag of it. If it's good, if it's good, give it to me. But bring it's not. me an bring me. It's never. But bring me an hour. Dump an hour in my front yard. Yeah. I'm gonna Put just it be in my like, this sounds great. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, it rarely. I guess that's the other thing. There's a bit of ego with it. Um, if a comic who I considered better than me, which I do several, or like an equal, was like, I have a thought. But a lot of times it's not that. Oh, it's bold to to to, to do that to but a, I think establish comic. It's a part of the camaraderie. Like, hey, we're both working out. I may be in the basement, but you know, and we're talking. So I think it's come. There's no harm intended, but it is that thing where sometimes they'll offer it, and then I'm like, mm, I have my voice established. Uh, <laughs> I've trust me, I've been it's in like, the. What if you made one. like a pussy eating face? <laughs> what do you think of that? It could be hot. <laughs> okay, I have another question. Yes. Do you like your dog any less now that you have a child? That's a good question. Tianfu. Um, Is you know that the name of your dog? dog? I had Blanche. I know. Oh, no. I, some people go. We, have, we a have a Blanche. Too. Really? Yeah, we have a Blanche. Also, I wanted to ask you if you thought it smelled like dog pee in here. No, it doesn't. <laughs> um, I think I knew that in the back of my mind now that you're saying, but you've had, then Blanche is old. The, there were three. Yeah. Yes. yes Bl- that's right. Three, but your cutie's even older. There were three comedy Blanches and ours is the last one to survive. Joe Mandy had a Blanche. May she rest in peace. You had a Blanche, yeah, a lovely Blanche. May she rest in peace. And we have, she was great. And now we have Final Blanche. You Final are- Blanche! <laughs> Tian Fu? Tian Fu. I Is that her, for real, the name of your dog? I got her a parking lot from a Chinese lady who imports <laughs> rescue dogs from China. Imports makes it sound Wait, so fancy and it's not. She said it was named Tian Fu? She named it Do you it struggle Fu. with this? Because I struggle with this. I adopted a dog who also just died. You met Pablo once upon a yes, time. Yes, tiny. Pablo yeah, died. I'm sorry. And I always, <laughs> so I always would feel self-conscious, especially around Latino people, calling him by his name. And I always want to be like, the pound... I got I, I adopted no. him in, in a la, in a Latin neighborhood Pablo, and Pablo no come on. Moshe you're too woke it could be it also, could be that I'm too woke if there's sure. one group that wants you to in, be included it's Latinos they're like come on in <laughs> they're like please name well, your dog after us no, no there's uh, Jews so, would love that so you've never felt you would never feel self conscious if you were in Chinatown screaming Tian Fu come I fucking come Tian Fu I've said her name around Chinese women and I love it because for a second I get to live in a world where they think I speak Chinese <laughs> and I feel so smart and I've seen like a Chinese lady be like Tian Fu and I'm like 
it means gift from heaven. She's or like, bitch, I know. She, yeah. <laughs> well, they don't because it turns out it's this really complex language and full Chinese fluent speakers will be like, I don't know the word for heaven. Like if you ask someone who speaks Chinese, they don't know half the words because there's like a trillion of them. Do you remember Hal Sparks? You guys remember Hal Sparks? Yeah. He, he was fluent. No one knew this about him, but he is fluent in Mandarin and oh, wow. used to tour mainland China. What a fucking brilliant move. <laughs> and no you, one, that's crazy. A billion people waiting, yeah. waiting for a to comic. To not laugh come. at you. No, that's, <laughs> no, I don't know how. I was just, it's more the. Yeah, I, I, I'm good on, I, I can go to Dublin, Scotland. Well, yeah, okay, here's a dirty secret. I've bombed in Thailand. I've bo- I don't like bombing. Everyone in- speaks English except for Americans don't speak a second language. Oh, that's for sure. I have taken my act to Malaysia. Really? I've gone all Mal- over the well, world. Malaysia, they speak straight up speaking. Everybody but. speaks English but us. Yeah. <laughs> Although my friend Louis, Louis Katz, he once was doing a show in Russia yeah. and he bom- he was bombing for a half hour. Do you think don't it's because his name is Louis he, Katz? Do you think it's the Eliza, Jewish? stop this. Okay, stop I'm the just, madness. He's a very funny comic. No, I, I meant because he he's Jewish. On, Eliza. Oh, you mean they <laughs> just were like, we don't need a cat. Yeah, I should have just said because his last name is Katz. That's what I should have said. Sorry. Bombing for a half hour. Finally, he's, I think St. Petersburg. He says, does anybody here know what I'm saying? <laughs> and like one guy was like, oh, duh, I do. Duh. And he goes, "Could do you mind coming up and translating my jokes? Yeah. And then he said he killed for half an hour with this like in, this oh, uh, funny. interlocutor. So who knows? I think um, I think especially at this, to answer your question, her name is Tianfu. I did not feel bad about it. And I think it's like a cute talking point. She doesn't understand Chinese or English. Uh but I think at this point, because of Netflix and the ubiquity, the ubiquity of the internet and specials, people log on to see American stand-up mm-hmm. and, and they speak English. But when you come to these shows, you're coming to see that performer. It's not like, oh, I got this lotto ticket. I hope this is okay. Have you ever done an international gig and been like, I'm not returning to this country? Uh-huh. <laughs> Are you willing to share with us what country it was? Uh, I'm trying to think. You know what? Usually... I, I did Albany and I was like, oh, I'm Albany, never- New York. <laughs> I, I, I'm saying, no, I'm not saying another, like another country. World. I'm saying a, a city I will never return to. Oh, I've done that too. I've had, I definitely had cities I wouldn't return Enough to. Enough time goes by that you're like, okay, it's a new venue. New, I'll give it another crack. Uh, I'm trying to, th- I don't want to say it because I never say never. Like you don't want to be at a place where it's like, you got to go back to yeah, yeah. Belgium. Uh, usually it's just a routing issue and, and it's like, oh, that was fine. And it's hard to get to. So you don't go. It's, I have to off camera. I'll think about a city. I definitely cities where I've gotten off stage and be like, this place can burn. Um, are you <laughs> happy to be out of the dating game? Uh, not, are you happy to be married? Obviously the answer has to be yes. You're on a podcast. Even if it's a no, it's gotta be a yes. But mm-hmm. do you feel a great, um, relief that you don't have to deal with that anymore? I mean, you're going to, you're about to meet our callers who are calling in with romantic issues. And, uh, and I find primarily that I just feel like every time they call in, I go, I'm just so glad I'm out of that game. It seems so hard. Doesn't it? I think it also seems hard because you guys to suggest, I'm so glad I don't have to deal with it. Makes me feel bad for my brethren that are in it. I think it's being older and the advancements of technology have made people a little weirder. And so I'm glad to not be dating in LA at this age. I think that's what I mean. Yeah. yeah. I think it's, it's just, it's gotten so complicated and so transactional and fraught that I'm just like, I'm just glad that I had, that I, I exited, I exited and it's nothing fraught about my relationship with the eater of the crumbs <laughs> over the here. Eater of the crumbs. <laughs> Right, yeah. Well, should we should we take some calls, honey? Yeah. All think? right. I yeah. Mean, yeah. I mean, I'm just gonna say Moshe's always making fun of me. He says I sound old because I always tell people because a lot of our callers are in their 20s and 30s. Yeah. And they're like, how do I meet people? And I'm like, go out. She gotta go get out there. I, I'm like, I'm like, like, well, like tonight at the, John, at the John Waters, I went to see John Waters. And there was like go to a John tons Walsh. of people yeah. there. People she were says mingling. I feel old. I mean, all I'm doing is saying go <laughs> see John a Walsh. go see a no, legend from the '80s. He, he is 80 years old, but I'm just saying at his at his show it attracted like a lot of like minded people, and there was like young people, old people, but everyone kind of was like kind of gothic in a way. And like if you kind of find the events in your town that are yeah. happening, you don't just. I would never date online. I'm sorry, I just would never do that. Did you ever do that? I wouldn't I be able to. You on, did. I, I with this I just want to say I never did online I had I, I never did online dating uh because I was always like just famous enough that I couldn't like just date a random dude and it didn't feel private but I wasn't so famous that I was like at a cast party or like on George Clooney's yacht so it was a very like you just like kind of date a friend or something I don't disagree with that and I'm always like I always tell friends that are single I'm like come with me to the shows tonight yes. there's always dudes 
especially if Joe Rogan or Mark Maron on the lineup. There's going to be the different Wait, sides of the dudes pool. Dudes come right, depending to see on what Mark Maron. Sure, that the- <laughs> but different dudes. Different dudes. Different Depends dudes. on what you're into. <laughs> low T. Low T. But low it's tea. true. I mean, it's like I would never. I, I just feel like but, every date I would be like, oh, I don't want. But this is. But you're also from a picture, Natasha. You a also. Picture? You also say you would never have approached a man and flirted with him and asked him out. I would never ask. So a guy what out. is the person in this scenario supposed to do? Eliza's friends like, oh, I'm gonna go. I, I like big, thick guys with tribal. <laughs> tattoos rogan or, oh i like thick big thick glasses Marin. what is this woman supposed to do walk up to a, a cute guy in the audience and be like hey so, so what i would do because i always say to friends i'm like come with me just because there are more men go to stand up than women and this is just statistically that, true that's interesting and they go alone more and more women i always encourage women to go alone but like to the comedy store on a random night i encourage you will- them to go alone as well <laughs> but it's totally different you'll never see just oh you seldom just see like a woman it's that's usually dudes uh-huh. so i always say come with me because there's a patio and that patio people get let out. Pretend like you smoke. Be like, do you got a light? You have me and I I have no, I'll walk up and be like, you're cute. Do you think she's cute? Great. You guys talk. That's, well, that is, is great. Is that a wingman? Yeah. That is a wing lady. I'm a winged yeah, friend. Yeah. You're good with wings and you're good with crumbs. I mean, that is Eliza, is what Eliza's I'm power a pigeon. is. But, but what, what is the, the notion, if you don't have an Eliza to say you guys think each other are cute, is the notion, the, the idea is to go out into public and look cute and hope someone approaches you? Yes. I guess. Yeah, yeah. That's not wrong either. That's crazy. It depends on who you're into and what kind of girl you are. If you're like the kind of girl that's like, I love talking to dudes, that's your voice, great. <laughs> I mean, don't have like be. a bitch voice. It would be your voice. You have to like, have a little bit of openness. Have yes. some oh, vulnerability. You, you look longingly at every man that walks by. No, but you're not just like you don't have like resting bitch face. Right. You know? Maybe put your hair. A friend of mine was just like, "Why aren't guys talking to me?" And a guy I was dating was like, "She was like, guys are talking to her and not me." And my friend, my the guy I was dating just went, "She has a braid." <laughs> <laughs> and like in like the most fucked up. Back, he wasn't wrong. The you braid think the is braid accessible. Was the, attraction? the braid sends a Pavlovian. <laughs> it signals Stop like it. homegrown this is milkmaid. Insane. Come on. It, and it was true. And it, it, <laughs> to it, this day, it proved out. You're saying in, in reality, the the everyone was, was talking to the braid. That it, was she funny. hotter as well? I don't know. No, different my, vibe. My, my right. old landlady was like, "I'll tell you who they are after the podcast." Okay, great. My old landlady was like, "You must make yourself like a smelly flower." Oh, was she French? That's so interesting, She's, though, because this, the actual smelly flowers, like when I would be out when I was single, like and like you're going to some, a friend's birthday party. We wouldn't dress. We would like. Put on full makeup and like yeah. have your hair done and like wear something tight and show off your body. Ap- I would rarely, yeah. I no would rarely approach the most outwardly, uh, I'm trying to f- figure out the right way to phrase this, slutty. but like a person, not slutty, I'm but kidding. if a person was like peacocking with like sensuality, I wouldn't, it would be intimidating and I would not approach that person. I would be more likely to approach the person that was simpler. Natasha's the, like, thanks. Br- braids. <laughs> no, <laughs> well, she approached me. Right, right, Actually, right. Actually, she did finally break her rule and she hit me up. No, I didn't. I mean, oh, kind boy. of. Oh, boy. I did? I mean, kind of. Moshe. All right, listen. Eliza. Listen, that milkmaid thing, that's a hot tip. I was just, he said that and I was like, what the essence of what you're saying isn't wrong. I think that's part of the game. Dress up, go out. The hottest girl there, like exuding sexuality, boys don't talk to her. So you should always shoot your shot because people are intimidated. But part of the fun of being a girl is doing all of that, hoping that there's someone better than the guy that talked to you. What site? <laughs> What? And also, summer's coming. There's a lot of events. There's a lot of things. You Summer like- is here. Get your body ready. <laughs> <laughs> Get it ready. Wait, what was it? Was it Raya? It was Raya. It was Raya. So what does your husband your do? Hus- he's a, he's chef. a chef. And hello, and- a chef. We were both at the LA Times uh, Festival Aww. book yesterday. He had a little booth. I don't mean to say that in a derogatory way, but he wrote a little note to you guys. No, is um, this for, us? for us? Yeah, this oh, is for you. Oh my so God, that'd sweet. be so shitty. I thought <laughs> you were plugging it. No, Wait, I am. What's the don't panic? During COVID, oh, we started, we committed to doing cooking amazing. shows every day. Oh, that is so cool. Oh, vegan. I don't, I thought you were. And well, so, we are, we, we are aspiring vegan. Yeah. Okay, good. Sure. Is he a vegan? No, but there's a lot of vegan vegetarian recipes in there. So he cooks for you like every night? Literally G- every Galutin. night. Dude, I fucked up. Noah Galutin, Eliza is not Galutin. Nope. We, uh, we're like, better the devil you know. We'll yep. keep it Schlesinger. Okay, so, uh, no, I mean, <laughs> I was going to make a Galutin intolerant joke, but then I, in the middle of it, realized it's been made before yeah. and you're probably sick of it. And so I bailed on it and then you thought I was making a def- different reference. Here's the real point. It's called the Don't Panic Pantry Cookbook. And then Eliza's Locals, April 18th. Huh? You April 28th. Too. April 28th. So oh my sorry. God, is this? I don't know what month. It's, it's soon. It's, it's days soon. from now. Amazing. It's a beautiful book. I so. can't believe oh, thank you get you. cooked yeah, for every night. Oh, he every cooks meal. for you every night? Every, everything I eat is him. Oh my God. Breakfast too? Yeah. 
We he, had bre- we had Mexican we had breakfast tacos this morning. Oh my god! Wait, hold on. Wait, you wake up and is it made? No, <laughs> it's like in bed. He just puts it in. There. <laughs> no, but it, he plans our meals. He makes the he made Sierra two little mini burritos for the book fair yesterday, and she just ate them. Your stroller. life is uh, so cute. Wait, like you on. get woken up at five in the morning by a small dog a named small t- Tian <laughs> Fu. <laughs> That then drags you into your baby's crib who's like Googling like, to and herself. And she's got breakfast tacos then, waiting yeah, for her. And then her husband bangs a gong. It's like, breakfast tacos. Oh, <laughs> wait, oh, wait. That's so cute. One more question. Yeah. Does he bring you coffee in bed? No, we don't eat in bed. I don't, there's no No, I know, I know. She's but there's got a some certain extra type. grind about coffee in bed. I think oh, there's like, it? well, some women are like, oh yeah, that's just what he does every day. Like I, they'll complain, but I'm like, oh wait, but he does bring, it's like, who does, who gets to luxuriate in bed? I don't want to. I get up. I make the bed. We're you out know, of there. The Talmud says. You make the bed every morning? Kamo, wait, how does it say? It says. Uh, what if I it knew says, it? Get, I, I, would just, be, I would be very impressed. It says, it, it says get up like a lion. Oh, yeah. It says wake up like a lion. I do not do that. I wake up like. Uh, like someone addicted to their phone. Isn't the yeah. Christian version like get up and so the devil goes, oh, shit. Like the idea that. Oh, like, is that right? Something like and that. And the Jordan Peterson version is get up and make your bed. Because they're, she I do. up and makes her bed. I make my bed. Oh, I like That's this. Smart. Our bedroom is very serene and like there's no TV in there. Like it is literally just for sleeping. There's nothing just for else. sleeping. We have sex outside. Uh huh. You have to walk outside. <laughs> but he doesn't bring me coffee. <laughs> All right. Well, I feel better. Yeah. Um, okay. Listen, we have some callers waiting. So why don't we hook up? So fun with one of these callers. See what they have to say. Maybe it'll be a Eliza specific question. Okay, we're gonna talk to Emma in Ohio. Hey, Tosh. Yeah, Mosh. You know, there's never a bad time to get a little bit better. I agree. That's which is why, why I married you. You always want to better yourself. It's really an important quality. Well, the way to better yourself quickly is to find somebody to talk to. And there's no better place to find someone to talk to than a talk space. Ain't that the truth? Seriously. If you can afford therapy, which talk space makes it extremely affordable, there is no excuse to not do it. It just makes you a better, more evolved person. And you can do it from the comfort of your own home. And you can even text your therapist. You can call your therapist. That's the beautiful part of this is they've made everything so easy. So the barrier to entry has been lowered. There's never been a better time for you to deal with any mental health challenges you might have. Talkspace provides you with thousands of therapists with all kinds of specialties. There's someone who's exactly right for you and Talkspace makes it easy for you to connect. No matter where you are in your mental health journey, talking to a therapist who is trained to help can make a huge difference. They can help you find a new outlook on life and help you recover your energy, confidence, and joy. At Talkspace, you can find the right therapist with the right training for you. So if you're looking to renew and rejuvenate your life, look to Talkspace. Right now, you can get $100 off your first month when you go to Talkspace.com slash honeymoon to match with your dedicated therapist. Go to Talkspace.com slash honeymoon now to get $100 off. Talkspace.com slash honeymoon. Get $100 off your first month at Talkspace.com slash honeymoon. Emma. Hi. Hi, Hi Emma. Emma. You look like you're calling in from a public school I was rec say room. Prison. <laughs> yeah, or a prison. They're very similar. They read similar. Yeah. Is where- this your house? I am in my parents' basement. This is where I live. Uh, okay. Your parents run a dodgeball gym. <laughs> <laughs> I chose this color. I was you okay. Did. Yeah, it's well, cute. It's, I like it. It is cute. No, it's mm-hmm. it's it definitely feels safe. Uh we have Eliza <laughs> Schlesinger here with us, and Hi, of Emma. course I'm Moshe and that's Natasha. What's uh, up? H- how can we help you? So I am 19 years old. Oh my and I'm god! I'm a freshman in college. It explains yeah. the primary color choice behind you. <laughs> yeah, I'm a baby. So I am finishing up my freshman year of college, and I go to the community college that's like right by my house. And it just so happens that for my major, all of the classes have ended up online for the entire year Mm. so I sit at home with my dogs I do my schoolwork there's no like face-to-face communication get a refund Uh, Uh, like yeah like I've never met any of my classmates or my professors like I only email with them which is super weird yeah and so I am feeling like super isolated and like I'm missing out on like a college experience at all and so I'm wondering what's your advice for like how to branch out and meet people and like try and salvage this year that I feel like I've wasted where I like have no friends from college and like, I've not done anything. Is this a junior like, college? That- yeah. Community college. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my first advice would definitely be change the color of oh. your parents' basement. Oh, no. Maybe that's why no on, one's hanging out on some shining shit. I definitely <laughs> think, you know, a mauve yeah. might just help you feel a little bit more sane, but yeah. you guys were just talking about this, weren't you? Yeah. Well, 
we were. We were talking I mean, about yeah, Justin going out. But I would also say that that might not be the right college experience for you. Is this the only college you can attend? So I chose to do community college uh, to save money, basically. I don't, I'm trying not to go into debt. And doing community college, I will not have to go into debt. I have an idea. You yeah. know the other students. I'm sure there's an email list or a class roster. Mm. What is mm-hmm. preventing you from emailing these kids and being like, hey, you guys, yep. my parents painted the basement this yep. dope color. <laughs> Why don't we study together? Hey, we're like going to meet that. at this coffee shop. Do you guys want to do it? I guarantee somebody will say yes. And you can do in-person study groups. This college is shafting you in terms of a collegiate experience. Mm-hmm. And so it's really up to you to form those friends. Um, I don't know if doing two years there, maybe you can get a scholarship somewhere. But let's say this is it for you. You have their emails. You can reach out. And if you're too nervous to write a long, like a bold letter, like what Eliza said, just one word would do. Just cyber, 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 cyber. Cyber. And see if anybody. (laughs) ASL. Yeah, ASL and cyber. But She's too young. Also, I I think it's (laughs) important to. What the fuck are you talking about? I think Eliza's right that you are getting like kind of shafted and and Mm -hmm. having some sort of. I would not stay at a place like this for longer than another year. Did either of you. You got to have some kind of. Neither of you went to. You went to Emerson. I did. Uh, neither I, of you I went to community, to community college. I, Emma, am the only real blue collar community college graduate on this yeah. call right now. Uh, and and it already is a difficult social experience. Right. Even when you're in person, yeah. it's not like going to college. It's our, you're, right. you're basically. You're almost well, better off. <laughs> you're no, saying. but you're basically what you're saving in money. You're, you're spending in, in not uh, having a college experience, but you're yeah. getting a, particularly extreme yeah, version i think eliza is really onto something like if you if you gather people i mean literally you live in a community rec center so why not you can watch community yeah that's good but, yeah. but <laughs> also i do you could just bond over the fact that this is a sucky experience I, like people love to bond over things that suck also yeah. i have to say like you know i have a similar situation in a way with moms and you know i i find that it's at the school you know often you know, there's some moms who are like on my dick and I'm like, I do never, I never want to talk to this woman. Like she's just like texting me, texting me, sending me shit. And then there's some moms who I'm like, oh, that mom seems really cool. And then I can never quite get a play date happening. She's and- on her own podcast right now going, there's this mom, <laughs> Natasha, just this texting comedian. me, texting me, texting me. But texting I'm me. just yeah. saying it's like, you know, it's, it's sometimes, and then someone, I think a therapist gave me the advice that you just have to make the first move and you just have to really, you know, put yourself out there and that's the only way it's going to change. And so I think do it tonight. What Eliza said, like, you know, and and even if just one person comes and I don't, I I don't think you want to send a long email, but (laughs) maybe there's like, (laughs) not if one person comes, because there no, could, there's, cool. there's going to be one really enthusiastic guy for sure that's yeah. like I'm in. Yeah, absolutely. I'm in. it's in a basement. Nude, I'm great. fucking there. Yeah. But I think <laughs> I, I think that Eliza's yeah. really onto something too. That uh, you were saying this right. Like you don't just say should we study, but you sh- you say something like Hey, we all know this sucks. Mm-hmm. So let's bond over the fact that this sucks and try to make something out of it. It's and the make n- it- number one rule of stand up comedy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and also you can make it useful in the sense of like you know like uh when there's like something really big and something that you know everyone's studying for like hey I'm gonna be at this mm-hmm. place if people want to get together maybe not make it your home maybe you could make it a public like space like a Panera yeah. something also sad <laughs> they don't have like Paneras in Ohio what are you crazy Eliza like that's like no the they do of- I'm totally joking <laughs> we, they definitely do, do. <laughs> I, know you, yeah. I know you it's do it's like actually just one giant Panera hey, one more thing that I'll say about community colleges the reason that I went I well there was a lot of reasons I dropped, dropped out of 8th grade and could never have gotten into a university I didn't have the money to go to a real university but also I didn't feel um, bad about being there socially because I had this a lot of other stuff going on. I was like a, a big into the rave world, and I think I wasn't in. A, I wasn't a comedian yet, but I just I I went to. I just had a lot of other interests that made community college socially like acceptable. not your only thing. Yeah, and so right. I would say that's another thing you have to expand a little bit. Yeah, I would say don't. Yeah. Don't go to community college and go, why am I not getting the college experience? Right. Like understand you're in a different kind of, you're in a different yeah. uh, stream than a lot of like typical college experience people and go out into the world and find what other adventures await you. Yeah, you so could be many. having yeah. real world experience while college kids are putting that on hold and then they get out of school and you're like, I've already been a vet tech for two years. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
find find a sex club of some sort. Find a sex and, club. Yeah, I guess is what I'm really getting. And, no, but and you, make some bold moves. Yeah. But I'm I, I I am really saying like why not go out and find like your people that are you're not finding them in college because of the technical or viral yeah. realities of what's happening there. Do what Eliza said and then find find some hobbies. What's the worst thing that could happen? You try something you don't like it and then you give up. You like drugs? Yeah, right. she does not no. look like she okay, likes really. drugs. Yeah, stay, stay, in, stay in school. Does she look like she likes drugs? She looks very nice and wholesome. Yeah, you're a wholesome girl. Oh, another, uh, wait, Sorry. I can't believe nobody gave her this advice. Um, go out and braid your, braid your hair. A single braid. Do a single braid. Just a single well, she doesn't braid. want to attract dudes. She just wants friends. She wants friends. Okay. Uh, yeah, maybe Don't two braids. Braid. Two braids says just friends. One braid is sex. <laughs> Are you going to send the email? Right. right now. I I'm. I will, but I'll have to wait till next. She's like, it's, it's really finals right. week. Okay. Oh uh, well, what better? You don't want aren't, to. Be aren't you trying kids. to study with people? Well, I'm already done. Like uh, she already done. did it, and you but don't need that. I, I was panicking and like writing you guys because I found out that next semester, like I had my hopes all up that I was like maybe I'll like be in person and like get to meet people and it's all online again. Why is so, it all like, online? Can you I, leave I this community? Yeah. Oh, are they acting like COVID's a problem? In Ohio, so my my theory is that since COVID, they found out it's so much cheaper uh -huh. and less effort to put it all online. So they just let the professors be all online. Is it there cool. another community college yeah. that you could go to nearby that has in person classes? Yeah, there you go. Not with the program that not I'm with in. The, like, not doing. with my major. Well, I think Eliza gave the the the, the advice, which yeah. is like everybody who's on the other end of this Zoom is feeling the same way as you. They're all going, "What the fuck." I thought this was supposed to be college on some level. And and by the way, I made friends at community college and we you hung did? out and I studied with them and I had real friends. I mean, it wasn't like going to college, but it was I, I made friends with people. So so if you reach out, you know, you take a step forward. I feel like she realizes, right, so many people will step toward you and be yeah. like, thank God somebody finally said yeah. something. Yeah. All right. Well, hopefully we helped you, honey. Yeah. Good yes, luck. Yes, you did. Thank you so much. You're All right. Awesome. Well, good luck and uh, change that paint color. Okay, well, thank you. She's like, please stop making fun of it. This is my home. <laughs> this is the 90th time you've said it, and we definitely get the joke at this point. Goodbye, Emma. <laughs> Bye, Emma. Bye. I was just trying to get a little tag going. No, I loved it. I do think that the color that's is a scam, though. The, the color is a problem. I no, wasn't just that's kidding. Your main if but you're sitting at home, no, really though, if you're sitting at home all day long, feeling isolated, and you look to, behind you, and it's a fucking primary color like yeah. that, you you need something. What are you talking up. about? Primary? It was like. It was like bright bl was royal bright blue. blue. Oh, I, it looked kind of purple to me. Would that it was. We I mean, wouldn't be making fun of it. <laughs> I'm like concerned that that is life. It sucks. Yeah. Everything sucks and now. And like, in Ohio. I'm and sorry. she's paying all this money. She's like taking community college classes in, in the basement of her mom's home. Like It's what's happening to society in, yeah. in general. They're stripping away everything they possibly can to ma have, I mean, at a restaurant. You're just like, I've had this dish before. I know that it's not made like this. I know that you've taken... Oh, I thought you were talking about just not wanting to educate people, hoping we'll have more like dumber people who will get pregnant and then we can fill up prisons. I thought you were going a different <laughs> way. You meant in terms of... I think that post-COVID... Maybe that too. Post-COVID, yeah. the, the, the experience yes. of life as a person has gotten gone way down in quality. A thousand percent. I completely agree. Everything is like a shitty version of what was once mediocre <laughs> Every, it's just like the ghost of what you were living everything is just I, tepid i love that it's the ghost of what you were living through and what you're living through was not that great not that yeah, great yeah everything when tepid. something is good you're just like it really blows you away because you're like wow you actually said hi and didn't ask for a 35 percent tip oh my god you know what's different though you know what has, it has stayed steady and is just as high quality as it ever was stand-up comedy come see us and see eliza's locals april 28th on the, youtube that about, whole show no oh <laughs> i just i just thought to do a ridiculous yeah plug. yeah okay are we gonna listen to some secrets yeah let's do it we have a secrets hotline where people call in and leave their deep dark secrets oh, i love it let's play a few of those okay. and then we'll do one more carl and then you'll be out of here okay hey tosh yeah Mosh. you know a lot of people use online dating apps but for a lot of people they're just not good enough they're not enough and that's why we recommend Talkify. Are you having a hard time meeting great people? Why do you keep trying the same methods over and over if you know you're going to be just set yourself up to fail? It's time to say goodbye to swiping and bring back the human touch to dating with Talkify. Straight up, it's a matchmaker. The Talkify matchmakers meet you 
and learn about you and what you're looking for in a partner. Then they will select and screen potential matches for you. They do background checks, video interviews, and they ask the tough questions that are just too awkward for the first date. Talkify is committed to finding your match. 80% of clients meet their person within the first 12 matches. They actually plan your date introductions and they handle all communications for you. It's super stress-free. If a, you're a person for whom meeting in person and the apps are not working for you, try Talkify. Right now, they're offering our listeners 20% off when you become a client at talkify.com slash honeymoon. That's T-A-W-K-I-F-Y dot com slash honeymoon for 20% off when you become a client. Talkify.com slash honeymoon. Hello, Natasha and Moshe. I have a little silly secret. Whenever I watch TV with my mother-in-law, um, about every two minutes, she'll ask me a question like, who is that? I don't remember this. When did this happen? Um, but what I've decided, it used to really annoy me, and I would answer every question, but now I just pretend I'm asleep. Um, and sometimes I'll keep like one eye open so I can watch what's going on, but she always thinks I fall asleep to TV. And when it comes up, she'll say, wow, Michelle, you must really be tired all the time. You need to get more rest. But I'm just faking it. Thanks. Bye. I have never watched TV with my mother-in-law. Sorry, Moshe. Uh, yeah, that is an interesting thing to do. How much time are we supposed to be spending with our mother-in-laws? How much time do you spend with your mother-in-law? I spend a decent amount. Really? You ever watch TV in bed with her? <laughs> <laughs> Not my bed. Remember, it's just for sleeping. That's right. Uh, my mother, though, is that. But oh, you can really? yell at your own mother. Yeah. <laughs> so it's different. I, it reminded me of today. I was walking with our kid and she was trying to say something to me. I couldn't hear her. And I asked her so many times. I just gave up and I went, yeah. yeah to my own kid. I, I do that in the world. But to sure. your child, I just felt like I should really be like getting down. And No, you need a break. Yeah. I That's okay. A, yeah. Uh, my other question is how often is she watching with the mother-in-law That's that this saying. is like a habit? I can you imagine? Can, can you imagine watching TV with your mother-in-law so often that you've created a diversion for her questions? You're like, ah, now I've got a strategy. It, now, yeah. uh, year five, I figured out how to avoid her questions. Here's why I think she's lying about this whole secret. Here's why. <laughs> because if you do it that often, she should know what's going on on the show. Nobody watches sporadic shows that have nothing mm. to do with each other. So she should be clued in by now. So you're a truther on this I'm secret. just saying, someone's got to be. And also, why don't you just be like, I'm going to go to bed now. <laughs> All right, let's play another secret. Maybe because you're getting free childcare. No, but you're there too. I don't get it either. Hey, Moshe. Hey, Natasha. I am calling with a secret about one of my children. Um, it's just so hilarious. And it's one of those things where you want to laugh out loud in front of your kid, but you can't. So I'm sharing it with you both. Um, we were getting ready for church on Sunday, and my daughter and I, my eight-year-old daughter and I, were both wearing open-toed shoes, and we were getting ready to walk out the door, and my son, who is 10, was putting on his sneakers, and he looked at our feet, and he said, oh, you guys are both, you guys are both raw-dogging it today. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I was stunned. And I was shocked, and I just said, yep, and <laughs> <laughs> proceeded out the door, and we went to Catholic Mass and just carried on with my day. Like, that was totally normal and okay to say. And I'm quite confident he doesn't know what that actually means, or else yeah. he wouldn't have said it to his mother. But I just pray that <laughs> he heard it in passing somewhere and is thinking that open-toed shoes with your toes exposed is raw-dogging. <laughs> toes okay. exposed. That's my favorite part. She had ASMR voice like a motherfucker. Like Pittsburgh. <laughs> so, <laughs> pleasant. <laughs> so pleasant to yeah. listen to. By the way, raw-dogging it uh, is a Catholic tradition. I mean, there's nothing yep. more on theme that's than <laughs> that's their thing. They they are pro-raw-dog. That is their kind of... That's as long their, as you're married, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's her secret? That her son said you're raw-dogging your feet out in the world? Yeah, I think that... You can't acknowledge it because then he's like, I'm on to something. Something so happened. Like, totally. See, you tell your teacher. We I accidentally like told our daughter what humping was. Oh. 
because the, d- the dog, the was, dog humping. was humping right. and I go, stop humping, hu- stop humping her leg or something. She's like humping, for, for two humping, weeks, two what's weeks. Humping? Oh. Humping, oh, humping. humping, and I was like, oh, it's, it's like when a dog, she's like, oh yeah, humping's like when a dog starts moving on your leg, right? And she's like, oh mom, is that humping? Like she just keeps asking oh me about God. humping like, and I'm like, saying it. I wish I would have, ne- like I, I didn't she know She started what- doing it. No. She was like, yeah, air humping. She, and- they only do like the words you don't want. I know. What about the other words? But I didn't know how to, I, I, I had wished I wouldn't have said that word just came out because like that is what the dog was doing and I was like Blanche stop you know stop humping or whatever (laughs) I had a thing today I was on a walk with uh, with our kid and um, around the Silver Lake Reservoir are all of the name all these names of of black people that have been killed by the police like that's it's on the fence around the lake and I turned the corner and she's like who what are those and I was like uh those are uh, those are people and then she's like, "What are why why are why uh, why are they up there?" I go, "Well, it's it's a memorial. You know, we've seen memorials before." And she's like, "Why are they why are they being memorialized?" Why? She said memorialized. No, oh but my some God. version of that. Why did they die? I go, "Yeah, they died. Why? How did they die?" Ugh. And I was like, "Well, they were." They were killed, and then she's like, "How? Why did were they killed? By who?" And I, and I, it was like so, it was like an interrogation where yeah. I had to. And she's so young, and I didn't know. And I'm like classic you know like white hip dad like yeah. is this the moment i'm supposed to is this uh, when we do it and i didn't know so i go i go i i don't know uh, yeah there, one was killed by the by the police it was trayvon martin and and tamir rice and i was like one was killed by the police and and then i was like this whole like how do, is this the conversation about the police now yeah. and then the other ones was killed by a guy that thought he was the police but he was there and he goes were they bad i go yes they were bad and and then she goes do you know any bad people i go well yeah Actually, I mentioned a comedian. Um, she's like, who? She starts going, who? I go, well, you wouldn't know them because I don't hang out with them anymore. When I find out they're bad, I stop it's hanging bad. out with them. She's like, well, what are their names? And I and one of the names she- I said was a comedian that, that you would know. But uh, and I was you like, you said this to her? I didn't know what to say. What am I supposed to say? Nothing, nothing. They're Your fine. daughter's going to be a lawyer. <laughs> it I mean, was so intense. And then finally, I, I finally found a, gr- a thought groove. Yeah. I go, well, bad people, here's the thing about bad people is that they do bad things in the world and you really need to find a way to avoid them. You know, the reason I, 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 I like kind of sort of changed the subject. In front of your kids. I was big time by panicking, sweating oh. and she's not even noticing. She's in like a blue push, push front car. And for like 10 minutes, I'm, I'm monologuing about how you need to avoid bad people because they'll make you do bad things and they'll pressure you into doing bad things. And she just kind of goes silent for a while and, 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 and they'll they'll pressure you into doing bad things that's why you surround yourself with good people because they'll encourage you to do good things and i finally felt like i was making a point and she just turns back and she goes can we watch more harry potter when we get oh home like she stopped listening like, completely. totally yes ask, absolutely ask me, if I, ask me if i know any bad people do you know any bad people i wonder <laughs> i wonder if i'm the bad people <laughs> well you think that would stop that's her in her, they tracks? Said at her school to say well i, I do know bad people I wonder. <laughs> I don't know. I just like. I wonder what she would have said if I, I had wonder. said that. You know anyway. what's really messed up about that whole thing is if you, I just feel like if you admit how you handle that, you sign yourself up for so much scrutiny. And it's like, as a parent, like in that moment, are you going to unpack like racial issues? Systemic and poli- racism. When do you bra- though? Not at five. To a I, child that's like thinking more about candy than anything some else. Some people say that there's never, the age is, it's never too young. I, I don't disagree with that, but I do think every group has their thing and Jews we have our thing and African American and Muslim everybody has their thing that you need to be aware of to and unpack a- for a child yes. of that group uh, for your like what's the Holocaust okay right, right, I can right. speak I get this would you but would you tell a five year old if, if if when your kids five it goes what's the Holocaust you think you're ready for In that baby terms yeah I think I, I, I think that's Germany what I did. needed a financial scapegoat so <laughs> like what? okay World War One let's yeah. go back because it does what. I, I think I did the what you're saying. I, I think I did you did the no, smallest no, you did, of unpacking. You did the best you could, and any parent that would judge it, it's just like, what do you do in that moment? Because you don't want to scare them. You don't want them to take that back to school and interpret it wrong. So, I, I, might, well, might. I wonder. I wonder. It's very challenging. All right, we still have one more secret. We got one more secret. But I wonder. There are bad people. There are That's bad what people. She needs to know there's bad people. I think that that was important information. I know. I feel bad telling her that. I though. feel bad too. Every time you give like a she lesson, she doesn't know that people are bad. Your kid is so small; it's not even. She's not even asking for I it. I shouldn't yet. even be chiming in. No, you should though, because she it's something you have to think today. of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the bad people are you. Yeah. Believe in the sunscreen. Yeah, no, but that is a thing that happens. Is every time you're faced with this choice as a parent, as they get older, yeah, it, it, it's 
you're doing your duty on the one hand yeah. as a parent by educating them about the realities of the world, but you're doing this other disservice to their spirit sure. by stripping away a little tiny layer of their innocence. Yeah, I hear that. And you can't do anything about it. I was I reading that. to her The Little Mermaid and they kept talking about a servant and she was like, what's a servant? And I was like, uh, well, it's someone who like it's a job. Li- lives with you. Uh, what did I say? I go, it's someone who um, who cleans up after you. But then I didn't want to say like, I didn't want her to think that we had servants because we have a (laughs) housekeeper. I go, but they live with you. So she was like, oh, like you. And so then I was like, (laughs) it's all very good. You got to write that down. That's really funny. That is very funny. So it's really hard to explain to them, you know, because they don't have any context. That's the thing. No context. But when you provide them with context, what you take this thing away from them every time. It's so scary. I remember the first time, uh, she expressed, I put something on her on her way to school and she started crying and was like, I don't want to wear this. It looks stupid. And I go, oh, she feels shame. Where'd she get that Where'd from? Get and it, it just arrived out of nowhere and it's these never going to end. These things just arrived. Do I you know. remember? I know you want to go no, on to this. No, I don't. Uh, whatever. I, I don't know if this is maybe just growing up in the South or I just think it's a, I don't know. The idea of telling your kid, someone's gonna get you <laughs> if you don't do something right and it's not a person you're just like they're gonna they're gonna get you like the boogeyman anything mm. or just like they're gonna so, i they're never gonna, heard anything like that they're gonna get you no never just this fear like just threatening you grew them up in the south you grew up like in san francisco yeah yeah it might be a southern thing. did you ever get here something get like you. that more like that something some entity they're gonna if you don't they're gonna they're gonna get you <laughs> it's so toxic. Or it's gonna get you it's so toxic. oh i know but there's not actually a thing behind it so it's just the fear of oh no i'm gonna get got i better not it's gonna get you oh that i mean that is clearly something we needed to excise from our parenting strategy you don't like gonna get you. are you gonna do it i think it's a You're great way to have it? no consequences we're not saying what it is just know you should have some fear take your hand off the fucking garbage can no they're gonna get you <laughs> it's wrong on every level it's it's scary it's fear-based and it is f- a lie should i stop telling her that she will pay the ultimate price and then i just kiss now her that i like <laughs> you will pay the ultimate price <laughs> all right we have one more secret okay Hey guys, um, this, I don't know how juicy this is. It might just be juicy to me, but, um, anyway, the mayor of my hometown is millennial. And at first I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I moved away for a while. So I was like, that's not my mayor, not my city. And then I found out that someone on his board, like one of his staff and, and the, the staff person's wife, well, now wife, I had a foursome with them and my <laughs> former best friend. And uh turns out that someone I went to uh, college with did something for like art direction or something um, for this for this mayor too. Like they help, they all helped him get elected. So I've officially, I've basically slept with like three people who work with the mayor of my hometown, which honestly, I don't think it's a problem. Like men and women doing the same shit, cool. But um, I don't know. I think I think the majority of people in my professional life would judge me pretty hard if they knew that. But you know what? I don't give a shit. Okay. So um, I just wanted to air it out here because I don't use social media and I don't have the freedom to do that in my daily life. Goodbye. I really take umbrage with the fact that you had to call him out for being a millennial. Like, what does that, like, <laughs> Gen Z don't do weird sex stuff? Come on. Well, oh. I think she thought it was funny that her mayor was a millennial. I mean, that is funny that her mayor is a, a millennial. A mayor does it, seem like a senior position. She's like, and he's Jewish. Anyways, moving on. Like, <laughs> it does, but millennials are 40. No, that is, is true. Is that true, really? Yeah, 40? It's true. Yeah. But it is, it is funny, the millennial mayor. I mean, we could sell that show tomorrow. Like that. <laughs> millennial mayor. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Print. I think it's funny that she wasn't sure the secret was juicy and it contained a foursome. <laughs> yes. It's definitely juicy. I want to know what she considers juicy yeah, yeah, if that didn't exactly. make the cut. That's right. You, a foursome, you'd think you'd hear that more often because it makes sense. It's like the two couples two come couples. together. Oh, I didn't. I thought it was three girls and the mayor. It could be. There's a lot of... That's what I thought too. <laughs> she said her best friend yeah. and the mayor's wife. It seemed like she had fucked the, the millennial mayor. <laughs> yeah. It, it did seem like that, but then she kind of dialed it back. I mean, I... And also that she thinks she'd be judged 
I can't think of a single person I know that wouldn't be impressed if I was like, you know, the mayor of Fuck. Chickasaw, Iowa. I fucked everyone on his staff, including him. Also, that you can't judge her because anyone judging her slept with that dude. <laughs> like you <laughs> fucked everyone. You're all in on it. <laughs> we have to Google hot millennial mayors. Oh yeah, let's. Look. We don't know that he's hot. Four. A foursome. You think, oh, he had that power to get you there. You got to. That's Someone cool. had a brain. He was doing community organizing before he even became mayor. Tell Emma from Ohio, uh, uh, get a community. Foursome. You think that the foursome is three girls? It and could be. Could be. I, I had a foursome once. She said three. You had really? a foursome? I, I did. It was real. We both like leaned. It was a oh, way. You should. It was bad. It was really bad. What was the demographics? <laughs> they were um, all women. Age. No, it was another couple. Our age now? A man? No. I mean, they, we were all the you same age. You were with age. a man okay. in a foursome? Y y was this in the book? I feel like no, it wasn't okay. in the book. <laughs> Wait, you Maybe fucked the next a guy? One. No, I'm trying to tell. Let me tell the story before you. Did you fuck a dude? No, guys. All right, let's play um, He's another like, but secret. But if I did, it would be okay. Uh, um, uh, uh, honey, uh, when a man loves another man and police brutality is. Uh, <laughs> so who was in the foursome? So it was a Craigslist hookup. I was dating a girl and we were, we found another couple that was interested in like swapping and it was really bad because we got there. Wait, you were already swapping with a girl you met on Craigslist? No, no, no. Craigslist? I was dating a girl. Okay. And, we she, and she were she and I were like interested in trying experimenting with stuff like that. So we found a couple <laughs> and we went over to their house and they were like really practiced at it. And so he like, it was very creepy. He like took my girl and like led her into the bedroom and then his girl started coming on to me i'd never done anything like it yeah i was just like fully incapable of participating physically i was just like so, so soft as as uh, as anything did you kiss the man no the man was in the other room <laughs> fucking my girlfriend while i had yes. erectile dysfunction with his <laughs> At like 20 <laughs> why did you have erectile dysfunction though with I was the girl? Like, stressed, it's weird. yeah i was stressed out and and she's in the other room and he's like having he's done this a million times yeah. so he's just like pounding away and i was just like oh, i'm sorry this doesn't usually well i mean i don't know if i could say usually because i've never been in this situation before you're just listening to them <laughs> fucking exactly <laughs> and then we went and then me and my girl went home and just talked about how weird it was how are you guys doing yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's natasha yeah. she's acting no. like she doesn't know yeah uh can i tell you um we went to iceland for just like a trip just for fun in january and uh we had dinner the last night at this incredible restaurant and it's one of those like like seats eight like it's like they do like a seating right and the couple next to us is it the place that only serves tomatoes no okay <laughs> no, there's have a, a tomato place. restaurant <laughs> this place in Reykjavik was called Ox, and it was so fucking good shout out talks anyways sitting next to a couple I'll say, tell this very quickly and they were speaking German and I could hear it and I turned to them and I was like are you from Berlin and the guy was like how did you know I'm like because you're both in black turtle I look like you walked off sprockets <laughs> obviously so we start talking we drink and we go out with them we're having the best time and he keeps me like I will oh, I will get the DJ we'll go back to my hotel yes we'll go and I'm like I'm, I'm good we go back to the hotel and I'm with well, you're Noah. not good you yeah, go yeah, yeah. I'm we, in we, no I, what you went to the hotel no we went back to sorry to our hotel oh, alone oh okay okay and I no I go that couple was nice he goes they were trying to have sex with us. <laughs> I was like, what? He goes, yeah. He was like, you guys will come. And they were very cool. But he goes, you guys will come to Berlin and I will make you schnitzel. And if you want to have sex with each other's wives, we can do that. If not, it is okay. <laughs> like, and they were so nice. And they kept trying to the point where the girlfriend at one point was like, Tobias, let's just go. They're not into it. <laughs> I was oblivious. Really? I just wasn't. I thought he was just like really friendly. <laughs> oh, that is very funny. They were trying to fuck us. Uh, I love that. We're going to see them when we go back. They were great. You are going to hang out with Tobias I thought again? they were so cool. Yeah. I don't know about fucking a couple. I'm not going to fuck them. I mean, what do you... Seems annoying. It could be. It could be hot. I don't know. My only experience is that it was not hot. It was just very, very embarrassing. Uh, foursomes are very embarrassing from my single experience. So if one person isn't into it, the whole thing's kind of ruined. I mean, I was into it, but I was also unable to participate. So nothing worry. to declare. No, I was. I, I mean, declare. it's yeah. What can you do? All right. Do we have another caller? Hey, Tosh. Yeah, Mosh. I have noticed that there's a little pep in your step, and I've noticed that there's a little green in your drink in the morning. I've been drinking AG1. I got those travel packs, and I take one with me every day. That's right. AG1 by Athletic Greens is a morning ritual, or it's a timely habit, and it's going to make you feel good. I've noticed a change in you, Natasha. If you're looking for an easier way to take supplements, Athletic Greens is giving you free a one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you got to do 
is go to athleticgreens.com slash endless honeymoon. Here's what I love about AG1 is that I drink this and it does not have that gross sugar taste. Right. Whatever that good. is. Moshe kept buying all these different like powders and he would put them in our smoothies and put them in water. And I was just like, oh, like it all has that like super sweet Athletic Greens AG1 does not have that. Didn't you just read an article that said that AG1 by Athletic Greens was one of the best nutritional drinks in the world? I did, and I, I'm, I'm going to Australia on Thursday, and I'm taking all my little packets with me, so each day I know no matter what slop they're going to be serving me in Australia on this shoot that I'm going to do. It's going to be a shrimp on the Barbie. It's a low-budget thing, so I'm a little worried about it. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to bring my little travel packs of AG1, put them in my little water bottle, and I'm going to at least know that I have my nutrition for the day. If you're looking for an easier way to take supplements, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs like the ones that Natasha Legero herself uses with your first purchase. So go to athleticgreens.com slash endless honeymoon. That's athleticgreens.com slash endless honeymoon. Check it out. All right, we're going to do one more call. Alex in Durango, Colorado. Do you guys watch Yellowstone? No, but my mom loves it. She talks about it a lot. It's, it's like, like an moms. old person show. We watched it and it's for moms. Well, we stopped it watching it the last yeah, season. It's bad and good. It's both. It's but it's like, it, it, do you ever find that you need to find things that you're in? Alex, yes. Alex, Alex, how Hi, are Alex. you? I'm good. How are you guys? It's Natasha and Moshe and our friend Eliza Schlesinger. Hi, Alex. Awesome. Big fan of all of you guys. Thanks for having me on. Of Thank course. You. How can we help you today? Um, okay, so a little bit of backstory. I just started seeing this guy probably like three months ago, and he's really great so far. Uh, he's a little younger than me, so that's new for me. How old but, are you? Sorry. How old are you? Uh, How old I'm are only you? 28, so he just turned 26. Um, he He's great in so many different ways, and I am wildly attracted to him, except for this one thing that he does. And uh, he licks his lips a lot Ugh. oh it's LL Cool J style yeah he, yeah Ugh, but also that is so hard it's very it's Gen like Z. when we're being intimate and it's also when he apparently he went uh curling for this like <laughs> work retreat thing that he went to okay so the, he's so he is the, white I just want to the curling coach had to tell him to keep his tongue in his <laughs> mouth because he was he might bite it off <laughs> wow so <laughs> That so is so uh, hard because it's like, like when I first met Moshe, he would bite his nails. And I, I told him, I was like, yeah. you have to stop doing that. Like, yeah. I really was like, I don't remember how I got you to stop doing it. But licking the lips is even harder because that's just it, like a tick. It's so benign, Ew. too. It's not like a, a clear bad habit like right. biting your nails where you can just really get away with saying it. It's more like whatever defense mechanism your body has gotten used to over the past 26 years. You need to stop doing it. Oh, stop. <laughs> Doesn't Eliza. it dry your lips out? He does this thing. It's like, oh, oh no! no! Like, all day. You gotta uh, break all the time. You gotta break up with them. Thinking yeah, about things, it's over. Cooking, yeah. She's wildly being intimate. Wildly attracted to him. Wait, he does it no, while no. you're being intimate. Like, yeah. Does he kiss you like that? Like, <laughs> no, um, he's he's good at kissing. It's like it's it's he's got funny a strong because, tongue. Yeah. It'd be funny if he's like, I don't kiss with tongue. <laughs> he's like, that's gross. <laughs> that's for the rest um, of my life. No, it's fine for the most part. It's usually like I have really bad vision. Obviously, I'm wearing glasses, but um, like I can't really see past like my my nose here. Great, take your glasses off. You won't see him <laughs> use his tongue. <laughs> exactly, I have no problem. Off, and then I can't see what he's doing. And She's then like, thanks for that. Me. Oh, geez, this is really difficult. So it's a Wait. tick. It's not just something he does. It's like it's it's a thing he does constantly. Yes, but it's it's all the time. But mm. it usually just mostly bothers me in the bedroom. Because you can hear it. And I can, I can hear it. I can see him doing it. Oh, like, brother. <laughs> can I offer up one thing? Because this is going to... You're not going to stay with this person. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> you're just not. I. Uh, we usually protrude our tongues when we're thinking. Mm. Like, that's why it's always like, hmm. Like, your tongue goes out of your mouth. Like, if you're mm. trying to, like, screw in something, you're like, oh. It's, some, it's, a, it's a way that we process thought. I don't know if he's like a curler, if he's like a deep thinker, but it might be <laughs> like a nervous thing. I don't even know what a curler is, but is it like a rower? It's, They're like nor it, you see, they it looks like an slide iron. Slide a thing down the ice, and oh then they do God. use a, a broom to do make what, it go. What Natasha did, 
any boys love direction unless they're they were at January 6th boys love <laughs> feedback and he wants to be attracted to you and so you can just be like you do that thing with your lips don't do it yeah. just don't do it don't, I, and don't be I, mean I, about I would it. bring it to I, I would I don't know what the way is to bring it to his attention but it doesn't seem like there's much to lose except he could get like extremely embarrassed and hate you forever I suppose I don't know I mean oh yeah you could do he might not know you could it's do over. a fun game where you go like it's over. You, you could do a fun game where you're like, is there anything about me that kind of drives you nuts that you just wish that I wouldn't do that anymore? Does work. He gets out of sales spreadsheet. He's like, oh, I don't really know you. I do have something about you. I I'll mean, go first. Maybe just <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, you don't have anything at all. Oh, I just got one thing. one thing. I mean, maybe the way to do it. Do you think you have the courage to say it um, in, in any context? Okay, so I actually, to be fair, I have actually done that with him. Oh, of like, boy. hey, what pet peeves of mine do you? notice that called, you would like me to stop doing it's called going um, fishing <laughs> we, we've talked Perfect. about these things before and i've like discussed some of my pet peeves um but that's it feels like a, a weirdly like personal thing that now is going to make him like self-conscious in the bedroom i is what i foresee and that is what makes me i don't want him to feel like that i feel like as a woman i have already felt that in so many different ways that I've had to overcome myself. No, 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 no. You don't need. You do not need to give him any empathy from your experience as a woman, because <laughs> he's not a woman and he deserves to suffer in some small way. Uh, I think, but you're saying you had that conversation, but you didn't mention the lip licking thing. Is that what I'm getting from you? Exactly. Also, he is well aware that he does do this thing because he's done it his entire life. And like any sports that he's played Ugh. he's had to make like his coaches have told him and then it was funny just like recently like maybe a month ago he went to that curling thing for his job just to like for a fun event for them to go to like axe throwing and they said the same thing and it's like other people have told him and he still can't keep his tongue in his mouth well, well this is the thing that's going to make you decide if you want to be with him yeah. or not because yep. i've definitely stopped doing things you know, like I remember one time a friend told me at, at acting school, she's like, you look in the, you need to stop looking in the mirror so much. <laughs> Cause like, I was just like, it was like, I don't know. It was just that, that's what I, I, I was focusing too much. And then I was like, oh, I'm, I'm, there is a vanity that I need to like get rid of. And there's other things that I've done in my life where I've tried to get rid of it and really work on it and like, look at my, uh, be conscious of it. <clears throat> and then it got better and I think that if he has that in him, that is one thing. But, this you know, like, if he doesn't give a shit and he's just kind of doing his masculine thing. I, what do you think? Alexa? I don't think he realizes he's doing it. And I wonder if I don't know if you love him or not, but he may not have ever needed to change like a coach right. making a joke about it. You're like, OK, whatever. Just play your sport. It comes down to is this something that he can work on? Um, and if you can't get past it, this isn't the guy for you, because if you were head over heels in love with him, I'm not saying you need to do that this wouldn't bother you as much when you really love someone. You're mm -hmm. like, they do things that annoy me or you don't realize it till later, but it's the fact part of the whole is, package. Yeah. So okay. I, I feel like this, uh, the fact that this is bothering you is emblematic of the fact that there might be some other stuff. What do you okay. think? Do you think she should say something, Eliza? Try it. And he, it, the, the it's point really is not that he stopped. Her. It's that he, he tries to stop. And does he, it's more about is he receptive to that feedback? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you this. But does ever she say it's annoying? Well, how do you say it most? Well, I just want to say, first of all, since you've mentioned this, I have become incredibly self-conscious about my desire to lick my lips during this call. Yeah. So the I, I've held back <laughs> many a so lick. Dry. No, he's so, doing something annoying. So what I'm saying is if I'm already feeling it like it's possible that you could give this information over to this guy and he could work on it. And I think Eliza's right. Like, yeah, other people have said it, but they weren't his lover. And maybe it'll come, it'll, it, it hit different as my generation, generation Z says yeah. it hit different <laughs> no when cap. it comes from no cap at all. Could you say it to him in this very sweet way? Like, baby, I have, I have to ask you a question. I notice you do this a lot. Do you want me to tell you when I notice it? Because I don't want to make you nervous. Spoken I like always... a woman who has a nice husband who mm -hmm. makes her breakfast burritos. <laughs> and coffee in she bed. I lied before. Soft, he does. No, he doesn't. Soft side. Like, but that is really true because that is the way to... I really like that. Like, do you want me to say something? Because I've want... noticed it happen. Can she say that? Yeah. I'm like too bitchy. I noticed like other people have said things. <laughs> no one else did. You're just no, like, she's saying people. Her, her coaches oh. are saying it. Yeah, but I, yes. I think if you come from it from a sexually motivated place, like baby... I don't want to make you feel bad. I'm so attracted to you. Like, da, da, da. I just, 
is this something you want me to tell you or does it bother you? And like, maybe he'll let his guard down. He'll be yeah. like, you know, I love my lip licking and I'm not giving it up for you. <laughs> Nobody, this is Durango. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I feel like he would be receptive to that. He's very analytical to those, uh, to like that kind of feedback. Um, and it, I guess the other thing is also just, he's been very vocal about things that I do that bother him. So then I've, he does not like being called babe. I have noticed that. Oh, yeah. What, do you, what wow. does he prefer? He hasn't, well, he's also never had a real adult relationship. Professor lick a lot. That's what <laughs> <laughs> Professor lick a lot. <laughs> like a cat. He's only ever been in one relationship really. And it was in high school and it was for a couple of years. So, I mean, do you, the, the reality is that if you, if you say it to him yes. and he works on it and it doesn't work out for you, you're doing a huge service to this guy and, and to all girl. of the women <laughs> that he's going to date <laughs> in the future, because this is gross. No one likes it. No one it's so it. gross but, but that his, ma- that his nice male way. sports yeah. coaches are saying, Hey man, chill out on the lip licking. Yeah. So you're, you're <laughs> even you're, dudes are saying it. You're doing a compassionate thing by telling him in a soft, gentle way. But I honestly feel like this guy might need more than a gentle nudge from his girlfriend. He might need cognitive behavioral therapy because this is like, this is a tick. This is a tick. But yeah. really this comes down to, it's less about that tick because it could be cracking his knuckles. Whatever bothers you, this is about, does the person I'm with, are they receptive to my feelings? So you say it very sweet. And if he's like, no, and you know what? You do things that, then then that's an immature person. You don't want to be in a relationship with that person. And if he tries, but if he gets an attitude about it, that's just a sign of what's to come in the future when there's another issue. So this is a mm-hmm. bit of a test. Like, is he cool about it or is he going to be a lip licker? Yeah. I used to have a friend. We never dated, but he would, he had this tick. Like mm-hmm. I would say every 30 seconds. He Jack would, Nicholson. He would <laughs> lick. It was really gross. He would lick his, <gasps> his, his hand and then and do that to his hand. Ew. Oh. Get out of here. Really? And like, it was just like, he'd be talking and then he would just do that. It was just like a tick. Oh my God. That's that awful. awful. But I mean, we weren't oh. that close and he was just like a friend who I hung out with a, you know, several times. So it's like, it didn't get to a point where I could ever say anything, but I, I, I don't think I could ever date someone. You who never had, said like, what are you doing? Well, we weren't that close, but I just, rem- I mean, maybe that, that was one really of the reasons because it was just like, we'd just be talking and he would like do the thing. And so, you know, it might be that, I don't know. It might be because that when I, when I look, think of that guy, I'm like, oh, that's something from his childhood. That's something that he needs a therapist for. It was like a definite tick. I think it's interesting that you are, uh, saying that he is very vocal about the things that bother you, bother yeah, him about you, yeah. but that you don't want to bring anything that yeah. might make him self conscious about the things that bother you. Like, it seems like that's a conversation that he's welcoming, actually. You, you know how you don't like when I call you babe? The lip licking thing for me is a little. Why doesn't he like that? Like, what's his reasoning? Um, because he, he says that he's never called somebody babe before and that it feels a little weird when somebody else calls him babe. All what right. Does, you should break about, up with this guy. Yeah. A thousand percent. Does he prefer czar? Like <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of, just, it's, all of his name tags actually say czar. <laughs> okay. Well, there you go. Eliza with a razor <laughs> sharp that. observation. Wow. Uh, <laughs> this guy's got triple A baseball player written <laughs> all over him. Does he dip? Does he spit his dip in an old Gatorade bottle? No, he drive no a Jeep? he's actually like a very clean cut, like, no. um, well versed person. He's great. I think he's awesome. Like he makes breakfast for me all the time. And you said wildly attractive. Like, yeah, th- this this is worth it. It's worth it to say yes. something. You got to say something. See what happens. I just realized something. He's never called a girl babe before. He's never been in a serious relationship before. He, he's never had the opportunity to date a woman as awesome as you yeah. who could tell him, yes. hey, no one likes this. Thank you. And say in a soft way, like Eliza said, but you, you forget being compassionate by not telling him. Be compassionate and tell him. You, you have an opportunity to help this guy. But also, like, remember, the end goal is to have sex. Like, you're trying, I'm, like, I'm trying to fuck you. Stop licking your lips. I hope your kid's bedroom is far away. People forget, like, we're supposed to be having sex with each other. Like, don't you want to do things that make me want to have sex with you? Yep. Yeah. Yell that at him. It's true. <laughs> Yell that at him. I feel like if he could just stop doing that, that little bit, um, it would be so much better. Um, his, I just noticed it the last 
that we were intimate and I was like looking at him and I was like, oh, this actually does bother me. Call like, him right now with us on the phone. <laughs> no, <laughs> no man wants. I would, but it's also really late here. Okay. <laughs> no man wants to be embarrassed. You don't yeah, want to make yeah, him feel like exactly. super embarrassed. So I like the way that Eliza recommended is just like, hey, babe, you know, or not babe, but hey, honey. Hey, Czar. Hey, Czar. Hey, Nikolai. Czar. He's the ki- the Russian king. Oh. Hey, you king of Russia, you. <laughs> do you, do you, you fallen want me to king. Te- <laughs> you murdered king. <laughs> do you want me to tell you? Because like it is a little like it kind of takes me out of it sometimes. And like I, I want to like tell you. It takes yes, me yes. out of it sometimes. You out know, of being horny. Yeah. Maybe, you know, there's a way I can help you be a little more conscious of it. Ooh, these and are then good. You yeah. can see how he acts. That's a good way to it's play. about how he acts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you something. Yeah. When I met my husband, I told him he was stinky. I said, you cannot get in bed with me because you're a stinky hippie. And he got... <laughs> cologne that i made him buy that i that he never wore again because i thought it was gross after he bought it and it was very expensive ck1 <laughs> yeah, I, I met him in eighth grade and he let me ch- i told him what clothes to wear and he's like whatever whatever makes you want to have sex with me i will do it that's the way it should be he dresses just he wears hanes t-shirts it's fine all right you got to do it all right do yeah, it you have the power you have honey. nothing to lose because you're not you will not stay with him and that will affect his self-esteem when you break up with him for yep. mysterious reasons that you're unwilling to discuss. So <laughs> just tell him, look, I want to be with you. You make me so hot, except for the whole fucking, that it looks like you're trying to lick a cantaloupe. Yeah. yeah. All, right, All right. Well, yeah. good luck. You're going to do it? Do it. I'm going to do it. Yeah. I'll talk to him tomorrow. Will you email us after you do it and tell us how it went? I definitely will. Okay. And right, not sweet. in the moment, right? Not in the sex moment. Not during no. sex. Don't yes. email them during sex, right? <laughs> and then one of you text me what happens, I do want to know. We'll let you know, Eliza. I do want to know. <laughs> All right. Okay, good luck, honey. Bye-bye. Yeah, Bye. thank you. Bye. Thank you. Oh, Moshe, I'm glad you don't have some annoying tick I mean, that that's I have to pr- tell you that's about. pretty you extreme. Are kind of, that's rough. That's, yes. that's extreme. Everybody's got little things, but that a tick that's just repulsive, a repul- oh, I can't even look at you. No, Eliza, it's you weird. It's, uh-huh. it's repulsive. It's, I mean, it is repulsive. And, and, and I really feel for the guy because he probably does have an actual behavioral tick. What is that from? Is that from like... Probably when he's a little kid, it's probably like sucking your thumb and he right. just got like used to it and that's how he copes, you know, like people have little, everybody's got little ticks, but sometimes, I mean, that licking hand guy, that was clearly, so awful. that is really I used rough. to smell my hands. But cognitive behavioral therapy is the thing. There is a way when to- When I was little, like I remember my mom, would, she would just tell me like, don't stop smelling your hands. Oh, like, get out of the room, Tasha, go smell your hands. <laughs> Daddy and I are talking, but, go smell your hands. But you have to like be aware of things sometimes and, and that's how you create like composure and you know, you just like- are able to hold back. I, I will share this. I have like this weird thing with my toe where like the nail grows into the skin and I like to push on it because it hurts. Oh yeah. yeah. And I, sometimes I dig in at I it. I can feel that. And sometimes I'll pick up my foot, which is disgusting. I'm a picker. I'm a big time picker. Big time picker. And yeah. my husband will just quite, <laughs> one time he threatened, he goes, I'm going to put a boot on you. <laughs> Stop picking it. But if I'm doing it, he'll be like, baby, like she does that for me. Like, yeah. She does that same thing for me. Gently. And, and then I'm like, oops, like I don't feel embarrassed. I'm just right. like, yeah, we're working on it. So he's he's sweet about it. Yeah, yeah, maybe, I, babe. Maybe I need a nickname for you so we don't get into a fight. When your I say thing it. with your thing with the picking is always very nice. Well, like often I don't want. She makes like, like a gagging noise. She does it like, <laughs> uh, uh, and that's my like cue. Oh, she doesn't that's like. That's my cue. Yeah. My wife making a bomb beautiful. Noise. Right. Uh, this has been awesome, Eliza. Eliza, thanks, thanks for coming. It's great and to have you over. Make sure to check out. Oh, yes. Eliza's Locals. Eliza's Locals. April 28th. And then go see Eliza on tour. One of the and best. Wait, one of the best. How do we is. see Thank Eliza's you. Locals on YouTube? It's going to be on you. How? I think I think you just Google Eliza's Locals. Okay. And then it'll pop up. By the way, I looked at the lineup, and, and these are not um, just like random sad comedians yeah. Eliza found. These are very funny people. That's yeah. so cool yeah. that you're doing that. I feel like such Thank a loser. You. You're a new mom helping out <laughs> people who just started. I, it, maybe it's therapy for me because it's know so hard. And I was just like, let me help. Hey, that is really also nice. check out the Don't Panic Pantry Cookbook by yeah. Noah Gallatin. There you go. Yeah. Eliza's husband. Yeah. Uh, he is so sweet, and I know he's a great cook, and I really am I'm excited, excited to try this. one of these yeah, recipes. We're going to do it. Uh, Eliza, you're the best. Thanks, Thanks for, for coming over. Me, you guys. Yeah, so for good sure. to see you. Nice to see you. 